Hello, welcome back to the Citizen Scientist Workshop. I'm Dr. Sean, and in today's technical note, prelude to a still, how to convert almost any glass container into useful labware. Suppose you want to be able to distill small amounts of alcohol or other common solvents, and you want to be able to do it on the cheap. The first problem you'll need to solve is what to use as your boiling flask. Most homemade stills, like this one built by YouTuber Nile Red, use a modified pressure cooker, which works great, but they're expensive and they make for a complicated build. It would be a lot cheaper and easier if you could use any discarded bottle like this one that you can get for the asking from from almost any bar in the world. The problem for the citizen scientist on a budget is that common glassware like this doesn't stand up well to strong heating. That's because, like almost every material on Earth, glass expands as it warms. So if you were to set this bottle on an electric burner and turn up the heat, the bottom will warm, and therefore try to expand, faster than the sides. This creates a stress inside the material that ultimately cracks the glass. There are only two ways to prevent this. One is to use a special type of glass, called borosilicate glass, that has a sufficiently low expansion coefficient so that the internal stresses never get larger enough to crack it. This is often sold under the trade name Pyrex, and that's the stuff from which essentially all laboratory glassware is made. The other way to keep glass from cracking is simply to heat it more uniformly. If you can heat the bottom and the sides at roughly the same rate, then you can turn almost any piece of glassware in your home into labware. And the secret to doing that is mineral oil. Here's what you do. First, select the glass bottle that you intend to repurpose as labware. I'll be be building a homemade still in the next video, and I'm going to need a long neck to connect to my condenser. So I'm going to use this bottle. Remove the labels by soaking the bottle in water, scraping off the paper, and then removing any remaining glue with a little alcohol. Now, if you don't want to get hurt while you're doing this, you're going to want to drop in a few boiling chips to make sure that the liquid will boil smoothly. Why? Because, as I'll demonstrate in a minute, bad things are certain to happen if the liquid in your bottle boils over. And one very simple way to keep that from happening is to use boiling chips. Anything that has a rough surface and that won't interact with whatever you're heating should work. Pottery chips are a citizen scientist's favorite. However, if the solution doesn't react with aluminum, you can just drop in a few pop tops from aluminum cans. Fill the bottle with whatever liquid you need to heat. Then, secure a pot that's just a little wider than the bottle. To make it easier to show you what's happening, I'm going to use this Pyrex beaker, but any cooking pot will work. Place it on an electric burner and drop in a few pull tabs from soda or soup cans, and then set the bottle on top. Next, pour in some oil to a depth of about 10 centimeters, or about 4 inches. Now, applying heat to the pan will heat the oil which will in turn heat the glass. Sitting on the metal tabs keeps the glass slightly elevated, which allows the oil to flow around underneath and thereby eliminate any hot spots that might otherwise tend to form. As the burner heats the bottom of the pan, you'll see these beautiful columns rising up as the oil at the bottom expands and flows up along the side of the bottle. It's the fact that the heat moves freely around the bottle that protects it from thermal shock and that keeps it from breaking. Now, a minute ago, I spoke of the danger of allowing one of these makeshift boiling flasks to overflow. Let me show you what I'm talking about. There are no boiling chips in this bottle, and so the boiling isn't smooth. It's chaotic, as the liquid becomes superheated and burps out its energy in large, randomly spaced spasms. If they combined in just the wrong way, BAM! You get a big blast of boiling water right in your face. Some of that burst will fall down into the oil, where it boils vigorously enough to cause it to overflow and catastrophe. Of course, all of this is very easy to avoid if you take the proper precautions. Just use boiling chips so the problematic boiling doesn't happen, and make sure that the top of the liquid is always well below the neck of the bottle. And finally, it's a good idea to set your hot plate next to a window fan just in case. It's proved pretty convenient to me on more than one occasion. 
And that's really all there is to it. When you're done, just let everything cool down, then clean the outside of the bottle with a little soap and water and return the oil to its original container. While the oil lasts essentially forever, over time it will invariably pick up contaminants from the environment. So just make sure you label the bottle appropriately and only use this oil for heating glassware from now on. By the way, if you don't have access to mineral oil, you can also use synthetic motor oil if you want to. Next time, I'll show you how to use this method to create what I call my Gorilla Still, which is the cheapest and easiest device I know how to build to distill liquids and to purify alcohol for your laboratory. Now, if you learned something useful from this short video, please press that like button. It really helps me when you do that. And don't forget to share this content with your friends and colleagues and to subscribe. For the Citizen Scientist Workshop, I'm Sean Carlson, and I'll see you in the next one.